dressageclinic.com. A world of knowledge at your fingertips. For further information on the United States Dressage Federation, please go to usdf.org. There's a thin line between you and your horse. Thin Line provides products that help to close the gap, allowing you to ride in harmony and balance with your horse and infusing cutting edge technologies into all their products. Thin Line's trademarked open cell technology was developed to move shock, weight, and heat laterally along the pad without compressing. Saddle Fit for Life scientifically proved that thin line Segway pad absorbs compression instead of recoiling it back into the rider's spine, protecting both the horse's and the rider's back. So, the question is, why don't you own a thin line pad? Welcome to the 2011 Adequan USDF Annual Convention and Symposium held this year in San Diego, California. In addition to the daily schedule of planned business meetings, lectures, and other educational activities, there are many opportunities for excitement and fun for all who attend. Amateur professional riders, judges, GMOs, board directors from almost all federations across the U.S. have traveled here to San Diego to attend this year's USDF annual convention. Let's move on now with some of the insights on the festivities of this year's USDF annual convention. George, it's exciting to be here. People have traveled from all across the country, riders, judges, officials, horse show organizers, etc. Everybody's very excited to be here. And many people are wondering, what is the difference between the USDF, the United States Dressage Federation, and the USEF, the United States Equestrian Federation? Well, I think first it's easiest to explain what the USEF is, that it is the national governing body of, of, of equestrian sports in the United States. Um, it has that designation from the USOC. It is also the FN, in other words, it's the National Federation of the FEI. Um, as such, it is our regulatory, um, acts as our regulatory uh, group for the sport. It, um, so through that, it, it does a lot of the uh, licensing of our officials, of judges. Um, it also ensures that we have a level playing field through, through programs such as the drug testing and whatnot. It's also probably most important to keep in mind it's multidiscipline. The USDF is, of course, the only uh, national organization dedicated exclusively to dressage. Uh, we are a recognized affiliate. We are the dressage affiliate of the USEF. Um, I think then when you get down to the, some of the other differences, the differences in how we govern, we, we the United States Dressage Federation is called the Federation primarily because it is a, a federation of group member organizations or local dressage clubs. And those clubs can be very large from thousands of members down to um, under 100 members. So, mm -hmm. um, so through that, we have a very, I think, through our what we call our GMOs, mm -hmm. we have a very close connection to the grassroots, but we also... Um, run educational programs and, and are involved in the competition and with awards programs. So we, we sort of run the whole spectrum mm -hmm. of dressage riders and enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that definition. Now, the USDF has always been concerned with the further education right. program. Tell yeah. us about the education program that the USDF is working on today. Yeah, we, we have several educational programs. We um, have a, what we call our L program, which is our Learn a Judge program, and, and that's a, a excellent program for individuals interested to go into judging or learn more about judging. Um, it prepares them to enter what would be a USEF 
program for formal training and licensing. Um, but anyone can take part in it. Yeah, this year's symposium I think is very exciting. We have, for the first time ever, uh, the United States has four coaches, dressage, um, true dressage coaches. Uh, they are through the USEF, which is the appropriate organization to have those coaches. We have our youth coach, our young horse coach, and the, what we call the developing coach, and then uh, which goes into the high performance, and then we have our technical advisor, which we sort of AKA as our national dressage coach, right. Ann Gribbins. Yeah. Well, that should be very exciting for everybody to see this weekend. I'm sure everybody is waiting for it anxiously. Now, tell me, at this year's convention, the USDF is tackling many subjects, many issues, many concerns for many people. And you, as president of the USDF, what do you think is the most challenging issue that you're facing today? Well, I think one of the most challenging is making sure that, that the uh, their interest in dressage continues to grow, that we're able to continue to grow our membership, especially in the current economy. Um, it, so that that's really in, in growing it at all levels. That it's getting the entry level and making sure that people that compete want to continue to compete, um, that they feel uh, certain rewards or, or satisfaction from competing. Um, so those are some of those, uh, the bigger challenges that we're facing. Uh, we found that we continue to, I don't know if you want to call it face challenges, but we're continually trying to improve our programs, making sure the instructor certification program say, is relevant um, and keeping all of, all of, basically in a sense, keeping all of our educational programs very relevant, relevant and, and, and designed in such a way that people find them interesting and educational. Absolutely. Well, George, what can I tell you? You have been such a tremendous driving force for dressage all over the United States, uh, not only as an uh, oh, incredible horseman, incredible rider, but also as president of this vast organization that's playing such a significant role for everyone. We want to thank you and uh, just keep going and tell us the future. <laughs>
since 1973, it has developed into the National Dressage Association. So now it has this huge structure, an office. It has 32 employees that are busy doing national things. And you have the problem of this huge national infrastructure, and you're trying to retain the original purpose of the organization, which is to bring people up from the grassroots into the national. Excellent. Now, uh, of course, the USDF is dealing with many issues, but I am aware that one of the m most important issues for the USDF is the further development of education. Where do you think we're going with that? USDF was founded, its major uh, mission when it was founded was education. That's what people were thinking about was education. As USDF grew, it developed this national structure. You've got to finance it. It costs a lot of money to run an office. It costs a lot of money to train judges. It costs a lot of money to um, do education. And people will spend their money on one major thing, and that's competitions. So USDF had to develop where the interest was, where people would spend their money. They'll spend it on competitions. And if you look at what US is do, F is doing, three quarters of what it does is stimulating competitions, awards programs, training judges, training officials for horse shows. And so that what happens is education tends to get lost. I tell you, Beth, you know, you are such a significant force <laughs> with this organization. I can, in continuation, after the conclusion of the convention, educational activities continue on the weekend with the National Coaches Symposium presented by the USDF, featuring for the first time ever in one arena, technical advisor and national coach Anne Gribbons, U.S. Olympic medalist and international rider Stefan Peters, young horse coach Scott Hassler, developing coach Debbie McDonald, and U.S. youth coach Jeremy Steinberg. Stefan, it certainly is an exciting evening tonight. Now, the USDF is a very large organization. You have over 30,000 members. You collect statistics, information, and data on scores, uh, much, much information, which is very important to the lives of many dressage riders. How do you do it? Tell us. Well, we process every score, every ride down the center line in the office. So of the 800 or so shows that USDF recognizes, we're capturing all that information, uh, the scores achieved by the horse, the rider, the owner, the judges involved. And that rolls up to this great evening that we have tonight, which is uh, an awards banquet that really recognizes uh, every rider who's achieved their dreams this year, all the way from training level up through Grand Prix. We have training level riders achieve, uh, receiving awards here tonight that uh, have uh, maybe never been in the spotlight before. And we have Stefan Peters and Ravel receiving award uh, who certainly know the, the spotlight and, and, and have achieved great things. Olympians, Pan American gold medalists, mixing in with uh, the grassroots. For further information on the United States Dressage Federation, please go to usdf.org. dressageclinic.com A world of knowledge at your fingertips. Each morning of the convention is started with exercise classes featuring both Pilates and yoga instruction. Presented by Kerry Petty, who focuses on strengthening and suppling exercises for the rider, building the rider's core, and how to use Pilates and yoga to correct rider problems. Scott, it's wonderful to have you here at the USDF convention in San Diego. Tell me, the USDF is known as a very valuable and important educational source for dressage riders all over the United States, if I might say, from other countries who share with the USDF. Tell me, 
What do you think are some of the most important educational programs that the USDF is offering to the membership? That's a great question, Andreas. I think it's pretty hard to nail it down to one specific thing, to be honest. You know, when I look at it as a broad spectrum, I really look at them as the educators of the country. And therefore, saying one program makes the effect is not maybe broad enough for, for my true feelings about it. So I think more USDF provides for me the incentive and the passion for people to come forward and learn more. So it's through awards programs, which is the benefit of the learning, obviously, through performance. But also, for example, I'm, I'm very much involved with sport horse breeding. I'm the chair, was the chair of the sport horse committee, for example. So that's all the breeders' passions that, that are raising their young horses and trying to do it the best they can and providing a platform to put them in competition and get recognition and all those things. And then you look at, you know, educational programs for judges, L judges, learner judges, trainer instruction, you know, the Instructor Trainers Council. So, you know, I think they're doing a great job by filling in the gaps that we need. And, and I think even more over time now, we're seeing how closely together and well they're working together between USDF and USEF. Scott, you're regarded and acknowledged throughout the country as one of the leading experts for the development of young horses. Tell me, what do you feel that the USDF can do more to educating people on the development and training of young horses. Yeah, I think I think we have a gap right now. Um, we have our Breeders' Championship Series, and that's for horses that are shown in hand, and then we have material classes for under saddle currently. But I think we have a big gap between taking these young horses and providing them really good development through just starting them under saddle. I think we're pretty, you know, I hate to be negative towards this country, so I'm going to be constructive criticism right now, which is that we're not nearly as developed as Europe is, not that they're the best in everything, but I think they do a very, very thorough job with young horses in the starting phases as well. And that's where we're still weak. So if I can make any new impact for USDF right now, I'm working hard on figuring out how can we do a better job at educating our, our basic horsemen throughout the country on starting the horses properly. The USDF annual convention offers a variety of educational opportunities throughout the week Professional and amateur riders travel from all parts of the country to attend the various adult and youth programs as well as other educational sessions offered at each year's annual convention. So exciting to have you here at the USDF convention in San Diego. Now the USDF is acknowledged widely about its benef the beneficial programs on education mm -hmm. that it offers. What do you think are the most beneficial programs that well, the I USDF has? First, the L program for the learning judges and also for the benefit of anyone interested in knowing why they ride dressage and what's expected of them. And also the uh, riding program for the certification for instructors. And I think those are very good. And we also have USDF clinics for riders and amateur programs, and of course our amateur programs are very important. Now tell me, you've been an important instrument to this organization for many, many years. What would you like to see in the near future that the USDF improves on? I think we need to keep it available to amateurs and really keep our emphasis on American bred horses, and I think we also need to find ways to include different breeds of horses, because the big warm bloods are not suitable for every amateur. Hilda, it's so exciting to have you here. You're such, you're an idol to so many dressage riders around the country and the world. And well, thank well, you thank for you. everything that you're doing for dressage. Thank you very much, Andreas. Some of this year's speakers include Dr. Hilary Clayton from the University of Michigan and author, lecturer, and dressage trainer Suzanne Von Dietz presenting a lecture and presentation on balance and movement with additional sessions being presented on deep Practice journaling, professional business education, controlling your body to improve your riding and overcoming fear, and much, much more. Larry, it's exciting to have you here. I mean, you are invited all over the world to give lectures. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we were together in Holland at the Global Dressage Forum, and you had given an astounding presentation there. Tell us, you're here in San Diego at the USDF convention. What is your lecture about today? Well, today I'm going to talk about balance in the horse and how the balance changes with stage of training and also what we do with the horse to change the balance from what would be his natural balance patterns. Hilary, what can I tell you? Everybody's waiting anxiously for this lecture and you have done so much 
for the understanding of the science of the horse. What uh, are your future commitments? We're doing a lot of work at the moment on physical therapy and rehabilitation in horses. That's one of our big research focuses at the moment. Um, Oh, we've got so much stuff on the go, it would take all evening to tell you about it. Suzanne, you're invited here to give a lecture today at the USDF convention in San Diego. Tell us what you will be presenting. I will be talking on balance too, so we both have the subject balance and movement. It's you and Hillary yes. doing the presentation yes. together. Well, it's not joint, joint, but we, have, we chose the, ch the subject together. And I will talk about the balance and the importance of balance on the rider, on the rider's seat, and how to develop it, how, how it influences, how it goes together, the ba yeah, the to moving together horse and rider in balance. That's incredible. Now, you're invited all over the world to give clinics, lectures, and you have had books and DVDs out circulating everywhere for the education of dressage. And I understand that you just have had a new book published. Tell us about this. Well, the new book has just been published here in America. It's a little bit longer published in Germany. It's called Rider and Horse Back to Back. And it is the idea of back-friendly riding that correctly understood and executed our riding manual, the classical riding, contains a manual of healthiness for the rider and the horse. And especially as being a physiotherapist, I had more and more people with back problems and back issues and horses with back issues coming to my clinics. I tried to put together a whole bunch of exercises, uh, understanding, awareness of using the classical riding manual in a back-friendly way. Well, it's so exciting to have you here. Now, is this the first time that you have presented yourself at the USDF convention? Yes, the USDF convention is my very first time here. I'm very honored to be here and very happy. For further information on the United States Dressage Federation, please go to usdf.org. dressageclinic.com A world of knowledge at your fingertips. Very exciting evening tonight. I know that you've traveled a long way to be here. Tell us, what are the best highlights for you being here at this year's annual convention? I can come up with three things. So first off, I'm really excited at the opportunity uh, to finally be able to help organize a national um, championship with the USDF. I think this is a really great thing for our sport uh, to bring an opportunity at the national level for adult amateurs and open professionals. So I'm really excited about that. Um, second thing is uh, I'm here to support our members who have won awards uh, tonight. Um, including uh, Katie Foster and Shelly Reichert, who have won some really top-notch um, year-end awards with the Junior Young Rider Program and at Grand Prix. Um, Shelly's horse is uh, a Grand Prix um, Canterbury Horse of the Year, so we're really excited about that. And this weekend, um, the, the highlight for me is going to be able to see all of our national coaches in one arena. I think it's unprecedented. Um, I think we have really top-quality people uh, leading the mission to improve dressage in our country and to have them all in one arena in a, one arena to talk about how their programs are going to connect and make dressage uh, better for the U.S. I'm really excited to see that. London, it certainly is a exciting evening here, not only for everyone but for you in particular. I know that you have been appointed on the Hall of Fame. What do you have to say about that? Well, it's a little, I feel like I should have a cane or a little walker or something as I come, but um, I don't know what to say. It's a great honor. I don't know that I really deserve it, but um, I'll take it. <laughs> Landon, you know very well that you deserve it, and everyone, not only in the United States, but in many countries around the world who know you, know that you deserve it. We are so proud of you, and I can say on behalf of every dressage rider, you are such an idol for all young riders around the nation. Thank you. Well, I hope I can give a little boost to help bring dressage further forward in the U.S. so that from when these kids come forward, the dressage will be a little better than it was when I was... Doing. Tell me, what are some of the highlights this year at the convention for you? Well, I spent most of my time in the USEF dressage committee meeting, 
uh, but I also was able to spend a little more time in some of the educational programs, which made me very happy because usually I'm in committee meetings. But I love coming and getting a little education, get my mind going, thinking about things a little differently, and that I love this year. Charlie, it's wonderful to be here at the USDF convention in San Diego. Tell me, from being here, what is the greatest educational benefit that you have received from your attendance? Well, so far it's early in the week, but there are a lot of really good programs. I'm taking my notebook, taking a lot of notes, so I can go home and actually share some of the experiences with our members who weren't able to attend via articles for our newsletter. The most exciting point of you being here at the convention, what do you think? Um, I think it's just continuing my education, learning about the Young Rider programs. I'm on the committee for the Young Rider, FBI Junior Young Riders, and the Sport Horse Committee. Um, we're always trying to think of new things to educate the members, and we work very hard as a committee. So for us to not just be on phone conversations and actually meet and discuss what our plans are for the future really excites me, and the symposium. As Senior Education Program Coordinator, Tell us a few things about what the USDF is doing for education now and in the future. Well, right now we are focusing on our education at our convention, which is what's going on this week, and we have several sessions um, going on through the rest of the week. We also have our symposium going on this weekend, which is huge for us this year, um, as it's featuring our four national coaches and um, we have a huge lineup of riders and we're hoping that that's going to go very well. Tell me, what are some aspects that you feel are the most important for the USDF to maintain and improve on? Um, I think the best aspects for coming to a convention, and I think the reason why the USDF should continue having conventions, is for networking. For all, the United States is such a huge country that we really need a, a central place to get together at least once a year and, and unite and bring our ideas together and meet face to face. I know there's the internet and things like that, but it's just not the same as meeting someone face to face, remembering their name and then being able to, you know, if they need help or you need help or you need a contact or you want to learn about something, it's the networking, it's the meeting people face to face. It's so exciting to have you here at the USDF convention in San Diego. Tell me, the USDF con organization is known for the tremendous educational benefits it offers to its membership. What do you think are the most beneficial programs the USDF is offering? Well, I have to say there are probably two educational programs in the, UN in the USDF pro uh, uh, organization who I belong to, who I think are the most important, which is of course, the L, the L Judges Program and also the Certification Program. And uh, since those two programs are running for now for many years, they're coming closer and closer together in their strategy to bring the same education to trainers, to riders, and to judges. And I think that is, in my opinion, one of the most beneficial programs in the USDF organization. And tell me, what do you think can be done to actually improve this program? It's more all of us are willing to sit together and explain what we believe in and to get closer and closer to the same strategy of of developing and putting out the same educational material. What do you think was the most beneficial that you've attended? Well, so far, uh, I'm a member of one of the uh, committees. I'm on the Technical Delegate Committee, and uh, the probably it's very interesting and able to help educate other technical delegates uh, with their uh, with their job as uh, licensed officials. But tell me, Jessica. Being here at the USDF convention and being a member of the USDF, what is the greatest educational benefit that you have gotten? Well, I got the youth scholarship to come here, and it's just such a great opportunity to be in all the meetings and learn about what goes on behind the scenes and getting to meet all these higher up people that I didn't know and getting a lot of education and taking notes. That is USDF convention in San Diego. Well, I was really fortunate because I'm a CPA and my business specializes in working with equine-based businesses. And I was invited by USDF to participate and to speak. And it's been such a great opportunity for me. And I'm really pleased because this is USDF is the first organization that I'm aware of that has offered this type of training. 
and educational opportunities to its members. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here and really pleased to be a USDF member. Sandy, from being here at the USDF convention as a member of the USDF, what's the biggest educational value you receive? The biggest educational value that I have received is going through the uh, learner judging program. I, um, I feel that that is the best thing that anybody as a member is of the dressage community to go to go through. I see. Excellent. For further information on the United States Dressage Federation, please go to usdf.org. dressageclinic.com. A world of knowledge at your fingertips. Tell me, from being here at the USDF convention in San Diego and being a member of the USDF, what are the greatest educational benefits that you have received? I would have to say it's, it's the joint meetings between certifi certified instructor committees and the learner judges committee. I think the two programs together are incredibly enlightening. Uh, we're trying to streamline them into um, something that the other members of uh, USDF can benefit from both organizations. Tell me something, what do you feel are some of the improvements that can be done to this committee? Making the meetings more open to all members, I mean people who come to the convention, having fewer closed meetings, more roundtable discussions that anyone can take part in. Steve, it's a very exciting evening tonight. Now, the USDF is a very large organization. You have over 30,000 members. I'm sure there's quite a bit of a structure behind the scenes. Tell us about what's going on. Well, we have 32 employees at Lexington office at the National Education Center in Lexington. And we have a budget of over $4 million. And the whole point of the USDF is to promote dressage and education to our members and to help promote the sport and promote their knowledge and training throughout the United States. I think this is the most beneficial moment that you've had here. Actually interacting with the clinicians from USDF, um, they're very informative. Um, as a non-dressage rider, a mother of a young rider, um, I've learned so much that I can take home to help her. Being here at the USDF convention, what do you think is the most beneficial point for dressage in the United States? Um, making plans to how we go forward in terms of growth and improving our education as well as the knowledge of, of dressage enthusiasts across the country. Tell me, uh, it's so important for your organization to be present here and everybody thanks you for being here. What do you think are the greatest assets that the Dressage Foundation is acquiring from the USDF? Assets that we're acquiring from the USDF is wonderful support from the organization. We try to provide them with financial support in return. Uh, the mission of the Dressage Foundation is to raise money and then give it away. Uh, Carol Laval, who's a, a, an ex-Olympian, uh, has said that you know the major obstacle facing riders today is funding. And that's what the Dressage Foundation is trying to do, is to provide that kind of funding support to dressage riders of all uh, types, uh, from grassroots beginners to Olympians and you know, high-performance riders. So that's what we do, and that's why we're here. That's fantastic. What points do you think can be done as a further help from the USDF to help you succeed with your point? Publicity, I think, helping them helping us to publicize what we can do to uh, get more donors. I mean, we, the foundation, require or rely on donors for all of the things that we can do. So uh, to the extent that, uh, that USDF can help us in those fundraising things, we can then in turn help them by sponsoring activities that, uh, that they want. We don't want uh, in the foundation to manage or run programs. We want to provide funding support for them and allow USDF and other organizations to manage their programs with our funding support.
dressageclinic.com is an educational website that allows you to enter the world of dressage training through videos of top-seated international dressage trainers, writers, and lecturers. Experience the mastery of some of the world's top trainers from the privacy of your own virtual ringside seat as they guide you through all facets of dressage discipline, sharing their valuable insights and instructions. The upcoming new video section is updated each month to provide you with information on the latest training videos to be showcased on the site. The special features section gives you easy access to the training videos that are currently available. DressageClinic.com A world of knowledge at your fingertips.